Okay, uh, when you talk of, of today's uh, context by ethanol, uh, there are two ways to see bioethanol uh, whole story. One is a group which looks into bioethanol as an alternate source for chemical, uh, I mean, uh, as an energy source. Uh, the another group looks into as a building block for chemicals. Okay. Uh, we are uh, working on this, looking to the second aspect of that. Okay. Uh, and in my presentation, I'll present you why it is so important to see it as a uh, building block for chemicals rather than just as a fuel. Okay. Uh, a simple uh, number crunching will give you a, a, a broad idea of, of the whole presentation that I'm, I'm pushing into the logic that I want to establish here is that of the global uh, total petrochemical production, 90% of this petrochemical goes as an energy and we generate just about 10% of the total revenue. Okay, uh, not, not 10, it's about close to 60%, sorry. Okay, and only 10% of the uh, uh, petroleum products goes into making chemicals, which generates about 40%. Okay. Now, when you talk of, of biofuel, particularly ethanol, we do not have neither uh, abundant land or uh, abundant biomass to substitute the energy front. Whereas if we can substitute the chemical and use bioethanol as a building block, okay, possibly we can able to meet both in, in terms of income and in terms of sustainability as well. Okay, and and because uh, almost every chemicals that we today we make it from starting from uh, um, methane or allied compounds, we can make it from uh, ethanol as well, because no other uh, there are a lot of energy sources there. You have energies uh, uh, right from solar energy to nuclear energy. All kind of energies are there, okay, which are non pollutant which are many of them are even much more cost effective than what we are talking of putting ethanol as a source of, of uh, en I mean, bio energy source. Whereas when it comes to making a chemicals, you need a carbon backbone. Okay. And that only either hydrocarbon or plant based plant biomass can only uh, give it that carbon source. Okay. Of course, at the end of the uh, uh, presentation, I'll give you a little bit on, on how uh, we are and globally people are thinking into using the carbon dioxide as well in one of the source. So basic idea is that we are trying to convert the total hydrocarbon economy that we have today to a carbohydrate economy. Now, uh, we need to see why. First thing is that sustainability of, of uh, uh, of the ecosystem because hydrocarbon whatever we are using we are using once for all we do not have uh, any mechanism to remake it because it takes millions of years the same thing if we are going for a carbohydrate economy okay we can use the part of the energy solar energy which is plant has captured we can extract that energy part or the carbon part that is fixed uh, during the photosynthesis and whatever carbon dioxide is, is, uh, comes out of the process is again recycled back into the plant system and it, the whole cycle continues. So this is an, an, an area where it could be a sustainable one. There are two different uh, pathways people are following. One is a biochemical pathway where basically what uh, we're trying to do a biomass from there we are as you all know that biomass has almost 70 percent 75 percent of sugar different types of sugar convert that sugar and use that sugar as a feedstock and make whatever fuel chemicals you want to make the other one is that uh, biomass just like any other uh, uh, hydrocarbon go for a gasification make uh, a biosyn gas which is a thermochemical route and you can also do the same way what we are doing today with the syn gas of course, there are a lot of drivers, as I already told, that uh, uh, one of the basic reasons for getting into uh, this green fuels 
is uh, the global warming i mean world energy demand i mean land is i mean uh, uh, the whole cost competitiveness of of other hydrocarbons these are the kind of things is is uh, uh, is the basic driver which follows this okay and of course uh, there are macroeconomic trends are also there for example uh, population growth is increasing so so is the demand for energy okay uh, people's uh, purchasing power is increasing okay environmental regulation is coming country wise in, in if a different country that you cannot have so much of carbon footprint okay so there are several uh, macroeconomic trends are also there which favors that one should look for the bio refinery as an an project and and if you see the energy scenario today uh, mostly mostly if you see uh, left hand corner uh, uh, here you see that most of the things are are the fossil fuels are the major things is there only this green part is the non fossil fuel on that again if you see the green part uh, a bigger one the next graph you have mostly it's nuclear hydro or little bit of biomass is there very little wind and solar energy is there okay particularly if you go bottom left table if you see that uh, country like china and india where of course the whole uh, things are growing the demand for this uh, energy is is shooting up and and many of the times we do not have an answer how to address this uh, uh, growing demand the as, as i told you earlier that uh, if we go for a, a, a green fuel or green energy or green building block chemicals okay there are impacts are there a four way impacts are there first impact obviously that it will reduce the carbon footprint okay it will give a financial sustainability particularly financial sustainability in terms of agriculture uh, uh, which is which is uh, almost uh, country like india where 70 plus percent people are depends on agriculture and i'll come in detail how this will be a financially sustainability for the agriculture it will bring it will also give the social sustainability and obviously it will uh, boost that whole agriculture economy as well now the pathway we follow in in bio refinery are not different from the things what we have in petrochemical if you see the left side petrochemical industry we start with a crude okay then we go on enrichment of the crude then we do a cracking then refining then we get an intermediate uh, chemicals and then the final chemicals or fuels that we are using today we have in a biomass is the same way that we have the biomass and then we can modify that biomass a little bit we'll come into our discussion little bit things and then we get the precursors kind of things in the biomass is the carbohydrate cellulose hem cellulose lignin all these things is there and then comes the first or the rather secondary refining through fermentation or gasification is the first building blocks are the ethanol methanol butanol lactic acid succinic acid all these uh, 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 compounds are possible this is where i was talking that that ethanol could be a bigger building block to make almost all what is there uh, in in chemical uh, uh, things comes from the hydrocarbon instead of using only for energy okay that will give a much better economy and much better uh, uh, environmental sustainability as well this is a, a bigger uh, block on that what are the things that we can do from uh, uh, biomass okay uh, obviously the first leg of building block chemicals that we can make it is ethanol uh, butan methanol butanol propanol all of them and from there what we are looking into more of ethanol to ethylene as as an secondary building block or primary intermediate you can say and and finally the whole range of end product the only problem is that this is where we need to be very careful that we are completing when we are talking of of uh, uh, green chemicals or green fuel we are completing with the crude oil or or the natural gas which is available as a completer and there are a lot of an analysis was done and 
more or less it is uh, uh, clear that if if the uh, uh, oil prices is over 70 or 80 dollar a barrel that is where the the green chemicals market can be sustainable okay but if oil prices goes uh, uh, below 40 then it's very very difficult to survive in the competition okay uh, uh, so uh, this is what the base case is there that any green chemicals or green fuel we are talking we need to take into consideration that we are competing with an uh, crude oil price and crude oil over $40 a barrel is absolutely no no for the green chemicals entry into the market. Now, when it comes to fuel, we also have a kind of different types of fuels are coming within the biofuel. The first generation fuel is, is the ethanol, okay? Uh, normally, which is uh, uh, today, the production things are there mostly, where we are breaking either starch or molasses to get the ethanol. The second generation that today we are talking is the cellulosic ethanol or butanol or propanol or biomass to liquid. Third generation is the higher alcohol, okay, I mean C4, uh, 6, 8 or odd numbers, okay. And the fourth generation fuel, which is CO2 captured. So today, uh, I will focus mostly on cellulosic ethanol and a little bit at the end on the story of, of how we can use CO2 as well. The reason is that why, uh, uh, if you see here, I was talking that higher alcohol could be a better uh, uh, things as an energy. This is the slide, if you can see, that today ethanol is there, which is normally uh, between 5 to 10 percent blending is, is there globally. Okay, refineries are, are on political front. They always say that we are very eager to get into the green, but the reason they are not adapting ethanol as an as an source because ethanol is highly corrosive. Okay, and if they use the standard, the ecosystem which is there, the the distribution system, the pipelines and things, if they use ethanol along with the petroleum, then the uh, the cost of corrosive pipelines would be a huge impact on the oil uh, companies and therefore they are not interested. Next choice comes butanol. Butanol is, is very toxic and therefore it's not easy neither at the production time nor at the distribution time. There are a lot of work is going on now in globally to replace exactly uh, uh, like uh, petroleum which could be a combination of ethanol, butanol, hexanol, or octanol, or heptanol at a, at a proportionate mixture, okay, which could be exactly like petroleum, doesn't, will, uh, will not have the corrosiveness which is the ethanol has, okay, and can keep the, uh, doesn't require any change neither at the use side of, of uh, automobile in, uh, engines nor at the distribution side. So, uh, one of the area of, of research is coming up globally is what would, would be that best, best, uh, best uh, uh, cocktail of, of alcohol which could replace one by one uh, 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 petroleum situation. I was coming on to uh, uh, beginning as I was telling that if you see the petroleum, total petroleum production or hydrocarbon production, uh, transportation takes about 90% of its volume and generates 60% of revenue. 10% of that goes into different chemicals making and which actually uh, uh, generates 40% uh, of the revenue. Therefore, one of the uh, uh, things uh, uh, people are, are looking into using all that bio things, what is coming uh, different alcohol as an building block chemicals rather than just a is in biofuel. Of course, uh, um, in, and in such situation, what is there that today we are looking into agriculture is just an, uh, a commodity where we get sugar, seed, grain, fruits, all kind of things. Very interesting part is that with all the inputs, whatever this uh, agricultural commodity today we talk, it doesn't count more than 15 to 30 percent of the total weight of the uh, biomass. In other sense, we are using all the inputs. Uh, a plant is growing. It's making its seed, fruit, whatever 
is there we are harvesting which is just about 15 to 30 percent of the total biomass that it has developed okay and we are valuing today's agriculture based on that output of that 15 to 30 percent of the weight whereas almost 80 85 percent of the biomass doesn't have a value actual value so one of the things is is what people are looking is that tomorrow if i can give this as an value addition which is the one of the things that we are discussing then this could be the primary source of agricultural income rather than the uh, 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 the uh, the total today agricultural community agricultural community could be a byproduct and agricultural waste so called could be the actual well in terms of of uh, uh, fuel and and chemicals uh, making things is there and particularly if you see uh, in today's context just imagine that a uh, 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 state like maharashtra or gujarat okay uh, they are very happy because they have uh, easy uh, um, source of hydrocarbon is is available either their uh, production or at least on the pipeline it is they are getting it fast but far away place like up bihar and kind of things doesn't have an oil and feels like oh we are uh, shortage of energy but look at the uh, biomass quantity they have actually they could be a, a bigger uh, uh, i mean chemical industry in in uh, those areas than uh, maharashtra or or gujarat so uh, today's uh, uh, things agriculture is only looking to commodity tomorrow's agriculture could be uh, uh, more of of making uh, uh, chemicals and fuels out of agriculture uh, and and today's agriculture commodity could be just a by product and this is where the whole economy can really go up, up, uh, i mean absolutely from the grassroots it can increase therefore uh, what we require is a sustainable green uh, fuel production okay so what we are talking is that we need to do an end to end technology okay and we need to see that um, value addition for agriculture is possible or not okay uh, there are some projections are there how much second generation biofuel uh, will capture it's about 10 to 13% of the total transport fuel by uh, 2030 and almost 26% by 2050 okay and uh, by 2050 about 90% biofuel will be from cellulose platform okay now this is where i differ that instead of targeting uh, replay, uh, fuel i think we should have a target of we should uh, replace 90% of petrochemicals by the uh, bio route rather than the hydrocarbon route and keep that hydrocarbon for its use present use as, as such um, when focusing on on second generation products as i said the first generation ethanol whatever is there is again taking share of that 15 to 30% of the total agricultural commodity to the what we have okay whether it's a starch or or molasses that's used for today's ethanol second generation ethanol uh, primarily looking from the agricultural waste okay and in our story that we'll tell you that uh, 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 it could be an excellent substitute for uh, uh, things we have done this technology at the lab and at a multi ton uh, pilot plant level and now it's going on for the commercial things as well so proof of concept and proof of value both have been completed and uh, with a bigger target that what we are looking is that uh, the product to get into more of of uh, uh, ethanol to ethylene or polyethylene areas that's what we are working as well as the higher alcohol uh, we are also working on on butanol and propanol uh, uh, except isopropanol butanol we are looking into taking alcohol and then a catalytic route to make it butanol because biological butanol production is an uphill task and after about a decade working into that we have given up that now as i said that primary aim is to uh, make from biomass to ethanol and that's what we are working to get into finally ethylene and polyethylene we are also working from ethanol to butanol we had little bit work on on making a biosyn gas to methanol and and for a chemical uh, process to propanol as well uh, among the propanol group isopropanol we are making through biological route as well to make it the polyethylene so 
our primary target is that this ethanol butanol propanol are basically we want to use as an intermediate and and final end product there the process that i am going to tell you is little different than uh, conventional second generation biofuel what you have already uh, maybe uh, aware uh, this is what is the uh, first generation things which is either sugarcane molasses or uh, starch molasses that or even in brazil sugarcane juice directly they are converting and you have the milling hydrolysis and then fermentation and distillation okay this is where the first generation is there in second generation obviously the material changes immediately the cellulosic biomass and most of the people what they are working on to a two stage treatment okay you first break the uh, biomass into uh, 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 sugars and then you do an enzymatic i mean hydrolysis into a sugar things is there pretreatment when hydrolysis part is there and most of the places it's a batch fermentation with a multi stage uh, dis uh, distillation is there to make it the second generation ethanol when we looked into this project is in, in early 2003 and 2004 we found that there are whole lot of bottlenecks is there because except that people are working little bit on enzymatic hydrolysis and little bit of modification of 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 uh, of, uh, of uh, distillation part okay nobody is looking into the change of of complete end to end technology so we looked into uh, uh, different uh, segments and we found there are issues are there with the uh, uh, biomass there are issues are there with the making the sugar platform there are issues are there with the organism and its fermentation and downstream process as well so the present that what we are going to present you today is a process which we call it second generation plus where we looked into the biomass issues okay because one of the issues of biomass is that no matter what biomass and where it is in the globally no biomass is available for 12 months and one cannot run a factory just whatever the biomass is available at that particular season or is factory cannot run in a season 3 months 4 months 6 months 8 months okay uh, storage of this biomass is an next to impossible uh, uh, kind of situation for such a huge quantity so we looked into what could be the complementary crop which can give it uh, uh, things then we of course we looked into the whole uh, uh, sugar platform improvement um, improvement in the fermentation an improvement in the downstream that's what the story that we are going to tell you so um, we started with a, a basic r&d way back in 2003 2004 okay and then we did a, a whole process optimization did a process lab and then got into a pilot plant somewhere around 2012 okay and then after doing lot of extensive pilot plant uh, slowly we are looking into the first commercial things is coming up uh, uh, for this a uh, conventional process again uh, was running the conventional second generation bio uh, things starts with an uh, uh, biomass okay and then goes into pretreatment then it goes to sacrification pretreatment mostly c5 it releases in sacrification you get the c6l also and then it goes to fermentation and downstream the process finally we have adapted after lot of trial and error we have are uh, using now uh, whatever agriculture residue available locally as well as a complement to that okay uh, we are also develop we have developed an energy crop which can be complement so that your total quantity of biomass requirement for a factory is always constant you can get it that and then on that uh, we have developed a, a crop which is uh, sorghum uh, seedless sorghum we will tell you that story little later part on this and and then instead of going for enzymatic things we have gone for a complete chemical hydrolysis to get c5 and c6 sugar and this is where and then we have gone for a fermentation which is a continuous fermentation and a downstream not a conventional downstream but a liquid liquid separation downstream we kept a primary uh, technology object obviously uh, 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 the the uh, energy requirement of the total process because some of the analysis we will see that many of the people are talking of of uh, putting bioethanol 
but when it comes to energy balance they are actually using more energy to get less of amount of energy okay when it comes to energy to energy so we we kept a, 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 a strict uh, uh, vigilance on on this okay and of course uh, uh, the uh, raw material availability uh, process complexity if you can do we also looked into that the process should be simpler and up to scalable and uh, come whatever it may be a process should uh, re use less amount of manpower because there are a lot of mistakes in biological processes there if if manpower is not uh, properly trained or available at time so there are a lot of drawbacks is there in the current uh, uh, second generation uh, which is uh, ethanol production is there in terms of raw material as i said uh, irregular round the year supply is is uh, of the agriculture residue is not there okay even if uh, brazil is working at the sugarcane just about 70 uh, uh, hect uh, ton per hectare sugarcane production so biomass production is also not an huge things is there then of course uh, enzymatic process is extremely slow and more than that what is today is happening that uh, only globally two enzyme companies is is dominating global uh, enzyme production for this purpose in other words uh, uh, adapting an enzymatic process is is a kind of accepting a slavery to this these enzyme companies because uh, ip protection is as such it is very difficult to do an enzyme of your own and get into this space uh, economically and of course there are uh, issues are there in the fermentation because people has adapted whatever organism okay each one has has some issues are there which i'll address in in, in later stage okay so there are issues because most of the organism that we have today in, in availability part is they use c6 as their primary source of carbon whereas when it comes to biomass to uh, ethanol the sugar platform gives almost equal quantity of c6 and c5 so we need an organism which can equally uh, take care of both c6 and c5 downstream process a conventional uh, 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 distillation what you have okay is is an extremely an enzyme uh, i mean energy guzzler okay uh, it's a huge energy uh, take so we need to see the downstream what are the things is there so what we did is that the first in terms of uh, uh, irregular and volatile supply of feedstock we made a dedicated energy crop okay and also the uh, uh, biomass particularly in indian context you cannot get only one single type of biomass it comes various types of biomass okay it could be rice straw it could be wheat straw it could be cotton plant it could be oil palm uh, uh, residue everything okay therefore a technology should be there that it can take care of all the uh, type, types of biomass rather than a specific one single types of biomass that's the first part of the work we did completed second part is that we did an enzyme process as well and we found that it's it's a uh, uh, we made a continuous sacrification rather than a batch process which reduced enzyme requirement we also developed a, even a better uh, a non enzymatic process and that is what we have adapted for our project inefficient and slow fermentation process because organisms prefer c5 and c6 we developed an organism which takes care of c5 and c6 at the same time at the same uh, space and of course we also uh, worked out in the downstream process which has got a uh, much lower energy requirement than conventional distillation process uh, in indian context uh, many state has uh, we have uh, close to around 500 plus million metric ton of, of agricultural residue is there only problem is that their collection and, and 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 distribution some of the states are very rich in biomass okay so in bioeconomy they are the richest state uh, in in our uh, estimation one uh, the other things what is was is worrying and what we discussed a little bit and earlier that over the years if you see agricultural income in our gdp contribution is is actually going down year after year okay what was there in in 2005 
okay if you see way back uh, in in 70s uh, gdp contribution of agriculture was over 65% and and see uh, 12 itself it was uh, close to uh, 12 14% and it's going down on the other hand if you see the productivity for agricultural crops are actually increasing almost all crops okay this is where the difference is is coming because agriculture is highly dependent today's agriculture is highly dependent on hydrocarbon and as the hydrocarbon prices are gone up the agricultural uh, profitability has actually shrunk okay and and actually it's, it's in a vicious circle agriculture agriculture is is not profitable today because of high energy cost that agriculture is using we have uh, uh, there are several studies there so i just try to tabulate one that how much uh, if i have to do an uh, additional energy crop other than my uh, food which is my uh, i mean primary necessity okay how much land is available which uh, which can be uh, dedicated for for uh, a kind of energy crop uh, uh, thing is there there are several studies there but on an average if you see even the lowest point whatever is there close to okay 40 to 40 plus a uh, uh, million hectare is available in terms of of uh, land which is suitable for a uh, uh, energy crop rather than a conventional agriculture thing so which is a good amount of land is still available for this so it is not that uh, if i grow an energy crop there is an uh, issue is there that it will uh, create problem for my food okay and a rough, rough estimation was, as i said that uh, 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 of that 500 million metric ton of of surplus biomass, uh, there are several use of that biomass is there uh, as you know in in many places in India, rice straw particularly used as 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 a basic things whether it's a fodder or or even for making uh, uh, in villages home and things. But available uh, uh, things which can uh, which can be used for biomass uh, uh, for for uh, bio economy. is close to around 300 so uh, uh, almost 60% of that total biomass is available and i i just uh, did a kind of small uh, uh, calculation on on how much one metric ton of biomass can give roughly about 250 liter and if i have a 300 million metric ton i convert then it's about 75 million metric liter of ethanol can be produced and if i take just 10% of that which can give about 7.5 million metric ton of ethanol and if you see our total fuel uh, consumption today okay in terms of diesel it's about 4.5 74 almost 5 and petrol is 11.3 right now okay uh, so even 10% of the total biomass available if i can convert this into fuel my fuel requirement is is theoretically possible so it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good case to uh, 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 go forward for it okay that whatever replacement that we can do even in fuel we can do a substantial things i'm coming back to this uh, 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 energy crop now we uh, we tried initially with with almost all of of the possible biomass right from sugarcane to rice straw to corn or maize comb to cotton stalk wheat stalk sugar beet energy cane which is basically an hybrid between uh, sugarcane and and other crops and seedless maize and even jute okay all of them as i said seasonal available only few seasons and uh, it cannot be complemented so what we did is basically we developed a, a, a seedless hybrid okay which is basically a jowar uh, which is we uh, uh, sorghum or jowar here you can see this is a uh, seedless uh, hybrids the advantage of this because they are seedless so there is no season it can be sown at any time it can be harvested at any time this crop matures in about 3 months okay roughly and you can do a round the year cultivation so idea was that or or that that we are implementing is that based on say a a a a, a biorefinery require about 100 unit of a uh, biomass 60 is available from the agricultural waste 40 can be this crop okay or depending on the calendar of the local uh, position if 40 is the uh, uh, agricultural residue available 60 could be this crop can be grown and since 
this doesn't have a seasonality it doesn't flower so it can grow and it can stay in the field longer time okay it can perfectly match the requirement of a bio refinery and this is a, a very productive plant and we compared this uh, if i produce ethanol out of that to sugarcane or maize which is in usa case that they are using maize okay in terms of ethanol production sugarcane can produce about 6000 uh, uh, liter per hectare of of uh, which is a brazil uh, pri primary technology in usa using maize it could be about 3000 odd and the one that we have developed with sweet sorghum because it grows three times in a year okay it gives close to 46000 liter per hectare in other word uh, the land requirement is 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 much much lower than what sugarcane is is required it's a very hardy crop many of you know that jowar grows uh, in natural condition is a, a rain fed crop it can grow in almost all semi arid areas okay so this could be a very good substitute uh, as an energy crop and that's what we developed and finally what we have developed also that uh, we can do a complete 100% residue Uh, agriculture residue and then we worked out what could be the production and cost uh, uh, would be there or if i have 50% residue and 50% energy crop or only energy crop what could be the yield and and, and the cost of production kind of things the interesting part of this switch sorghum that some of the hybrids that we have done now the uh, uh, varietal registration as well okay if you can see that they matures between 65 to 130 days depending on different hybrids okay and they each time each 3 months okay or or uh, 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 around 3 months they produce close to 60 to 70 ton of of biomass which a very high sugar content okay uh, anything between 11 to 15% okay so you can use the uh, juice as as a source as well as the bagasse just like sugar can bagasse of the total things we worked out also the economics of that that if a farmer is cultivating this switch sorghum a maize or a chickpea or a sunflower okay his income is is much higher if he uh, uh, grows for a switch sorghum okay uh, even at a bare minimum price of switch sorghum if we are giving close to around 1500 a ton okay it doesn't have a problem of of dry biomass storage it doesn't have which is got uh, uh, in most of the other crops that you cannot uh, you cannot uh, store Uh, rice straw and things for uh, uh, thousands of tons at a one place we also worked in this crop to uh, minimize the uh, this is a little bit of of kind of molecular biology we did it of uh, comat and cocomat uh, uh, to uh, down regulation of of the gene to make um, this crop with a less amount of lignin okay basically it it helps in terms of separation faster Uh, when it comes to hydrolysis, both both chemically or enzymatically, we also have worked into uh, different areas to improve this crop in terms of higher sugar or or uh, 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 a little bit of drought resistant or salt tolerance and things, so that uh, this crop can be grown anywhere and everywhere. Only drawback so far we have got in this crop is that this crop is not suitable a place where uh, water logging is is there because. Uh, this crop essentially loves a little dry climate coming back to a uh, sugar platform we tried initially as i told you that we tried different types of pretreatment we have a series of patents are there then we did uh, sacrification as well both uh, uh, batch sacrification and continuous sacrification we found that lot of advantage is there in 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 uh, uh, continuous sacrification um we brought down the requirement of enzyme to uh, conventional which is nrel use about 20 mg protein per gram of cellulose to about 2.5 mg uh, uh, protein per gram of cellulose but even then we found that one of the problem with enzyme things is that that we cannot produce enzyme because of the uh, 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 patent regime that uh, enzyme companies has okay therefore we have to depend on on their enzyme source always with them and in a business it's not desirable that uh, you one of your primary uh, ingredients for the process 
you are dependent to somebody to such, such extent that you have no bargain power so we developed after a lot of working into enzyme for almost a decade we developed a, a simple non enzymatic process where we take the uh, lignocellulosic biomass we do depolymerize them at a room temperature and then hydrolyzes them with a cocktail of acid basically uh, not one acid but a, uh, six acids are there at a different cocktail at a 90 degree only so that's the only high temperature uh, things is there neutralized at a ph of 6.7 and then filtered one side we get the lignin completely out the other side we have the uh, the sugar uh, by products is there which is basically liquid things now this is what one can store for longer time just just like just like jaggery one can store for this one for longer time okay and 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 uh, the finally if you require to dry that also they look just like a normal sugar things is there this also we fine tune the process depending on requirement again we can have both c5 c6 sugar together as a combination okay or we can have separate uh, 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 c5 and uh, and c6 so here c5 we take first and and c6 also again depending on what exactly we want to do with which sugar so this can be used as as a as an primary uh, sugar source and we have found the cost of, of production of this one is very very low this also gives an advantage that one can think of decentralized uh, 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 sugar production and bring it into a factory the final sugars for the fermentation at one place we made a comparison of all the uh, possible uh, technology which are available globally okay right from fx to uh, lime all kind of things and last three columns are the uh, column which is our enzymatic process and final the chemical process that we are working now or or adapted for the uh, 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 final things which almost 98% of theoretical level sugar one can recover on this and and they nicely uh, 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 separate i mean you can have Uh, pure glucose xylose and allulose okay uh, all of them are are distinctly uh, available and this is what the advantage what we have saw that uh, in terms of enzyme things one of the things is that it takes longer time and a lot of capital investment is there because you need to uh, put in sacrification for longer time okay and then you get a very dilute solution of sugar you need to concentrate you get a sugar concentration of 2% which is not suitable for fermentation so you need to use lot of energy to make it at least uh, 15 to 20% uh, concentrate to suitable on that on the other hand the non enzymatic process okay uh, we can do it half of the time okay and one fifth of the cost of enzyme production coming to the uh, conversion things of course uh, novel i mean uh, the if you see most of the people are using either the east saccharomyces cerevisiae or gymomonas or e coli each one has got its own story whereas e coli can use c5 c6 effectively okay but it uh, has a problem of bacteriophage so it's very difficult to scale up and continue that uh, organism for longer time many people has tried this in in japan in 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 china and in usa and finally had to close it because of the bacteriophage things no e coli is available which is resistant to the bacteriophage same with the story of the uh, uh, gymomonas mobilis which is nrl mostly have done and people has also worked on on yeast to make it uh, suitable now problem with the uh, all this uh, other than e coli and and and, and a uh, little bit of gymonas uh, yeast is it's it's a very stable but it doesn't have a transporter it doesn't have a transporter to transport c5 into the system okay so most of the work has been done on putting this transporter into the membrane system they were successful in that but the problem is that this all this uh, experiment was done at a uh, haploid uh, or a diploid uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae which is not an a polyploid yeast that we use for industrial purpose okay 
nobody has globally still today have done ever uh, saccharomyces with okay, a polyploid saccharomyces with a, a transporter system. So these are the problem was there. I mean, uh, basically, uh, they are not they are not able to use uh, C5 effectively only using C6 and because they are using even after transporter because the transporter is not very effective in these systems you can only use a batch process you cannot make it a continuous process because in biomass system c5 and c6 comes together okay and if, if the organism is taking only c6 then till c5 is complete you cannot have that batch restart the batch again okay whereas if if the organism can take both of them together then one can think of going for a continuous uh, fermentation as well. And that's precisely that we have adapted. We developed some Saccharomyces cerevisiae with, uh, uh, with uh, initially with some transporter. We got reasonably good result, okay? Uh, but only things what we did a bypass is that pentose sugar se taking separately instead of using xylose into the system, we take out the xylose and make it xylulose and then mix with the uh, normal solution. Then Zylindos have a transporter into the system and, and got reasonably good productivity. But finally, the click thinks uh, we were successful in, in using Cornibacteria as, an, as a platform. It's a very hardy organism. We did a lot of manipulation. First part of the manipulation was here, okay, of the transporter for xylulose and arabinose. So we did a couple of upregulation of a couple of uh, our five genes we did. We knocked out the lactate pathway, okay, uh, from the according bacteria. We slow down a little bit of acid one as well, okay. And we also have one of the uh, a gene or two uh, rather here, these are two upregulation to use the pyruvate effectively. After about four years of work, we are successful on, on developing this one, which can use C5 and C6 very effectively. And we got a productivity, one of the highest in the world. Okay. It's about nine gram per liter per hour. Okay. Uh, only uh, a Japanese lab is little better than us. They have achieved a two, up to a 10 gram per liter per hour with a 90% efficiency. Uh, we did at, at a, from a 500 ml uh, uh, start to uh, we did the uh, finally a, a pilot plant at a 500 liter but what we did in a 500 liter is that we did a, a, a kind of matrix system okay to attach this bacteria into that and make it a continuous fermentation uh, because of this uh, 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 immobilization of organism a 500 liter uh, uh, fermenters were able to take organism close to a 5,000 liter a conventional uh, fermenters uh, organism, which is, is there. So in a 500 liter, we get a productivity is, is close to a 5,000 uh, liter of uh, productivity in, in normal things. These are some of the uh, study that I'll just show you that in sugar, uh, sweet sorghum bagasse, sugar cane bagasse, wood, or sanham or rice straw or cellulose if you can see all of them okay each of them uh, the uh, uh, both uh, the c5 and c6 finish at the same time we developed this one is in further into uh, things and as i said that we uh, made into an uh, immobilized system which has reduced the reactor size very high cell density and, and very high uh, concentration of the productivity things is there. there. Then we came into a process which is uh, basically liquid-liquid uh, separation, okay? And here what we did is that uh, we had an adsorption column initially and then LLD column, uh, both are in, in series. So what we did is that uh, uh, we are taking the fermentation broth directly from from the fermenters putting into in a little pressurized condition okay within solvent solvent which has got a, a boiling point of, of close to around 32 to 35 mix them for some time into a pressure condition release the pressure 
okay the solvent is evaporated out and you remain uh, uh, solvent along with the ethanol is evaporated out and you remain the uh, broth which is there and recycle back into the fermentation and that's how we linked it along with the fermenter to make it a continuous uh, system this is where uh, we have worked partly in collaboration with the uh, iip uh, teradun and this is uh, much much energy uh, uh, savings than a conventional uh, distillation process which is ethanol uh, things is there okay this is about the pilot plant that we have which is uh, can handle about 10 ton biomass at a single day okay just got all the section everything is uh, uh, I'll, i'll be happy to let you know that everything here is designed fabricated implemented by everything here we have not imported anything anywhere okay um we have run that pilot plant i mean uh, uh, in a continuous process almost 3600 hours now we run it once in a while as the uh, requirement is going on we did a uh, whole economics of how much it cost okay so uh, if we are using 100% sweet sorghum our cost of production at uh, at a pilot plant level is about 24 uh, rupees a liter if we are using 50% sweet sorghum and 50% as uh, egg residue then it's about 20 and if you are using rice straw cotton only the agriculture residue then it comes to around 19 or so this is a, a cost that we arrived at the uh, uh, production level so happily with all other cost uh, uh, together the cost of production or or out of factory gate will not cross 30 rupees which is lowest globally also this process uh, because of the chemical process of hydrolysis and and continuous fermentation and uh, fermentation and an lle process adaptation when we got into an engineering we found that uh, uh, the plant cost in terms of capex we have reduced close to 50% in terms of opex as well because of of uh, 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 lesser costly chemicals and and lower time and uh, things opex about 30% and time close to 60% than conventional second generation ethanol technology which is available in the market as i was telling that at what cost we did a, a comparison globally and ours is is roughly about 16 rupees 75 paisa on an average cost comes based on on operational cost only okay, only operational cost of course the whole process is a zero discharge and lot of by products you can get it out of that particularly lignin uh, can give a whole lot of other things uh, first uh, we have licensed the first uh, 30 uh, klpd uh, unit in karnataka which is under uh, undergoing now implementation with we are going to use about 50% residue and 50% uh, sweet sorghum one of the challenges that we faced and i thought that i'll highlight that what is there in in not only this ethanol but in i mean almost all technology space in india is that you get a, a, a normally good amount of of fund from either dbt or tdb or dsr or in ugc all places to make proof of concept level very little amount is available on proof of a uh, a uh, value level in other other word pilot level okay and practically no uh, fund is available on pre commercial level and i think this is one of the biggest bottleneck not only for cellulose ethanol to become a, a commercial success okay uh, but but uh, uh, even the other technology as well uh, some of the countries has addressed this one usa uh, has addressed uh, singapore has addressed this one in india of late they have started uh, vgf which is basically a interest subsidy on on uh, borrowing but any uh, startup company which has got proof of value may not qualify to get a bank loan to uh, finally get the vgf so it's the policy driven things are are the one of the biggest bottleneck is there other than the technical bottleneck of of uh, uh, sourcing the biomass or 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 uh, even the technology uh, uh, 
implementation as well the other threat is there is that uh, failing oil prices as you all know and alternate and cheaper other renewable energy source and this is what i flagged it in the beginning is as well that one of the biggest problem of of bioethanol uh, in in today's context if we are using bioethanol as an as an energy substitute then oil price could be a, a, a one of the biggest problem the third emerging things is coming is is uh, a rising electric vehicle market okay because uh, as the more electric uh, uh, vehicle will come uh, the requirement of of transportation fuel will will uh, drop down as well and this is again another uh, reason as is telling that both in terms of we can negate this uh, oil price or 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 energy things or electric vehicle if we are using bioethanol as an building block chemicals for uh, uh, pe uh, uh, petrochemical industries things the last one is of course uh, 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 this and also if we are can using little bit of carbon dioxide now when you are using bioethanol production one of the loss of the carbon is that uh, the carbon dioxide okay if you can see that one mole of glucose can give you maximum two mole of ethanol only so two mole of carbon dioxide in some places if the things are not very efficient even more than that only one mole of of ethanol you will get it and 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 four carbon is lost in the process in in terms of carbon dioxide so uh, one of the things of of making this much more viable if one can think of converting this carbon dioxide back into some chemicals and uh, this is our the general portfolio that we have uh, these are the some of the chemicals that we are working right now to make it uh, from ethanol and almost all uh, uh, uh major chemicals aromatic chemicals what you have in chemical industry whether it's a caprolactam or adipic acid very interesting things this is what uh, uh, if you see that all starts from benzene and and if you see a uh, a uh, 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 structure of glucose or or uh, fructose or or even uh, xylose okay it's it's a very much an aromatic structure i mean linear things we we saw just for our understanding but it's an it's an it's a closed circle uh, uh, structure so uh, there are a lot of attempts is going that uh, that uh, and and if you see this hydroxyl groups on on benzene on making this it's in seven eight stage process chemically we know okay this can be possible from uh, directly uh, from starting from glucose or or xylose okay all of them okay enzymatically it can be produced and these are very high uh, volume uh, uh, chemicals uh, industry which is totally depends on on hydrocarbon can completely replace by uh, uh, glucose xylose or or fructose arabinos things last i want to uh, give you a some highlight uh, where carbon dioxide as a backbone can be worked out there are several uh, uh, universities working penn state is working on, on photocatalytic conversion of of Uh, carbon dioxide into uh, carbon monoxide most of the people are working carbon dioxide convert into carbon monoxide okay with different catalyst and and things and and then using that carbon monoxide just like uh, syn gas things so a lot of work is going on globally uh, we also have started little bit of work on converting the carbon dioxide particularly for us a good amount of carbon dioxide is coming when you are talking of of any of this alcohol productions and if we can capture those carbon dioxide and make some chemicals then we can actually use most of the things thank you very much hello thank you sir thanks for your presentation nice to explain how you can translate your entire uh, bio energy things from laboratory to the uh, industrial level hmm. still i recall those days 2006 to 2009 Uh, so uh, now the presentation is open to all so anyone have any doubt uh, uh, relating this uh, technology or yeah any... questions are welcome not the difficult one <laughs> <laughs> hello good morning sir uh, dr alok is this side uh, sir uh, just a layman question uh, uh, at uh, this uh, rice uh, waste or rice husk 
they cannot be considered as a biomass waste or something I means um, rice husk you one can think of uh, but problem with the rice husk is that rice has rice husk has lot of silica in it okay, okay. Uh, one of the richest source of of good silica um uh, uh, so uh, actually uh, uh, rice husk there are a lot of work is 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 very interesting work is there we worked on on that as well uh, you know one of our german unit one can think of rice husk to get a uh, uh, extremely good quality silica extraction okay mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, uh, alcohol okay, okay. Sir, uh, sir, sir, the biomass but can be can be used the uh, balance part once you take out the silica okay balance part can be used in fact this is one of the problem in in uh, 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 biorefineries if you are using rice straw as well because straw also have a good amount of silica okay uh, mm -hmm. what we worked out to fragment this silica along with the lignin fracture okay otherwise it creates a problem uh, throughout your uh, process okay so if it is a rice straw is there the system is is as such that you first separate the lignin okay and then you separate the sugars uh uh separate so rice uh, husk is is suitable but uh, biomass wise uh, if you see today uh, major rice husk is going for uh, for uh, uh, oil extraction okay uh, and and then comes the silica extraction okay. and and then you have little bit of biomass is available whereas uh, if you take the rice straw you have huge amount of uh, biomass is available so it will be cost effective it may not be cost effective okay sir thank you thank you so sir there is no such technology to remove that uh, silica silica from the rice husk and there is no silica there are, there, there are there are you interested i can tell you how to do it <laughs> no no silica is in them whatever i learned a uh, little bit i uh, mean it's not working functionally very well no so, you cannot do it biological way it can yeah. do it in a chemical way a chemical, uh, chemical. Uh, uh, simple method is there uh, it's not very complicated you, one can think of of separating the silica oh nice sir yeah so uh, if you are participant just uh, look at uh, if you have any other queries also you can directly mail sir his email id is there in the chat so anyone have any doubt of uh, so yeah. i'll ask 